What's up everybody? Blue Gabe, y'all check him out, Joey VT. Joey lives in Jacksonville, does fishing all over the country, California, the west coast of Florida, Jacksonville. He wanted to come down and spend a couple days with us. We were gonna go to North Carolina, but it's blowing way, way, way too hard to go up there. So today we're gonna catch a bunch of bait, try to get Joey a big snook and a big jack. But more importantly than that, we're gonna stock up on bait for the winter time. And I'm gonna show you guys how to not only catch them, but how to properly store them and then properly freeze them. So when you are fishing in the winter time, because mutton fishing is crazy good. And I mean, cobia, everything's good during the winter, but typically we have a shortage of bait. So today we're gonna to show you a whole bunch of cool stuff. Some of it educational, some of it fun, seeing if we can get him whooped by a river donkey. <laughs> and I'm glad y'all are here. All right, don't panic. We're gonna get right back to the show. And I promise you this one, I start the day off and I film in order as it happens and we catch some serious, huge, massive fish in this video and we do some awesome cooking. First though, I had to take a second to tell you about a really cool travel app that Kelly and I have been using called Hopper. What Hopper is, it's a, like a search engine. It's good for iPhones, iOS, or Android. All you gotta do is download it, then select a destination and automatically a color-coded calendar will pop up. Once it pops up, it will show you prices from red to green. Red being the most expensive, green being the cheapest. It also has another awesome feature called watch a trip, which means all you really got to do is select a destination and it will start sending you like really cool deals. And then once you select one of those, if you choose to, you can also use another option called price freeze. What that means is once they send you a deal, just hit price freeze and then you can lock that price in and you have a few weeks to make your mind up because Kelly and I are constantly changing our mind. So this app is not only helping us save money, it will definitely help you save money. And if you click the link in the description below, you can also earn $10 in carrot cash, which you can use on your next hotel stay. So that's even more savings. Check out Hopper. I promise you won't be disappointed. Now back to the show. So we came here to catch mullet. Not only do we stop in this little pocket to get out of the wind, but this is where the mullet are at. Look at all these chummies though. We want to go catch a snook. This is how you do it. Oh my goodness, I threw a banana cast. Banana? I will give you a tech tip if you're cast netting. Always get your net wet before you throw it. Grab that basket and put it right there. Oh, I'm way ahead of you. Eons so ahead of you, Gabe. We will take these baits we just caught and we'll actually chum the snook up with them. Now, one thing I recently started doing is I got this basket so I can dump the bait in the basket, then dunk the basket back in the water. Oh, wow. wow. Whoa. The 100 pounds, that's like a 50 pound throw of bill. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Hey, bye. Hey, There's too many to put my bait well at one time. Oh, True. Is it dunk it in the water real quick. <laughs> ah, they're tickling my feet. Now, what do you want? What do you now want? Dump them in the bait well. All right. No, I don't got it. I don't got it. <laughs> There's so many filters. Yeah, I wouldn't even put. Don't put the rest of them. Yeah, in. no. Holy. Sh so this is not going to go to waste. Mackerel season's coming, and if you can get chummies like this and freeze them, you can chum the mackerel up so much better. So we're gonna clean this deck up. Get ready, throw again, and we're gonna to try to freeze about 50 pounds of these little baits. So one of the most important things when you plan on freezing bait is as soon as you catch them, put them in a good salt brine. This will help block in that freshness. So much bait. Got a shovel? We are going to tear the snook up in just a minute, but first we need to catch some more bait. Now I know I do a ton of cast netting videos, but to me, cast netting is the most important part of almost every day I go fishing. So I really want y'all to get the grasp of what I'm doing. Right here, you can see all the bait fish flipping. My net is now wet, so it'll be way easier to throw. I come down here, grab it with my finger, and I pop that lead line out so it's free. I don't want to catch near as many as I caught that last time though. They're everywhere. 
Now, I just threw sideways with a real heavy wind and still pretty much pancaked it. Well, was it a mullet? Yeah, I got mullet too. I think you I could- just killed two birds with one stone. There you go, there you go. There you go. Oh. Nice. We want to separate those mullet out of there if we can, as fast as we can. I don't want to put any of those baits in the bait well besides the mullet. All right. Mullet are super hardy, so they're not going to just die from being in here for a second. Now I want to take all these while they're still alive and let them go swimming in here. Oh my gosh. Skill. Freaking explosion. All right, so we've accomplished getting the bait that we want, the smaller pilchards. We're gonna take them home and vacuum seal them. We're now gonna catch some more mullet because I wanna cook some mullet and I wanna use some mullet for bait. We're gonna go back in the river system and find a seawall where the current's hitting it and the wind's blowing waves up against it and it should be a really good situation. But is there enough bait in there, Joey? Good, good. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna show you all how to throw it one time in slow-mo and I'm gonna throw it as far as I can. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. Getting blitzed. Oh. Oh, get him, oh, Gabe, get him, Gabe, get him, Gabe. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a good opening That's clip. That's twice we've been filming a video and had something get blitzed like that. That's hilarious. Oh, that's a good opening clip right there, buddy. God just handed that yeah. to us. Look at all of them. Whoa, let me get the bat. Like, literally, that was meant to be. What are we doing, intro? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Blue <laughs> Gabe. He just had the hand of God help us with a really cool clip. Oh, oh God, look at that. Oh. What are the odds of that? There. I think we're good. <laughs> oh. Well, Gabriel, we got mullet. Well, don't forget, we're also wanting them to freeze yeah. and we're wanting them to make Wahoo baits with. They're a good size, too. I'm only going to put a handful of slacks in the bait well. You want a big one or a small one? Smaller one. When you're snook fishing, you want something about six to eight inches long. Really no bigger. Now, you'll see that as soon as I saw them coming, I quickly got ready. A lot of times in life, Joey just free gaffed a 150 pound Mako. 175. 175. If he, <laughs> if he would have been sitting there daydreaming, that wouldn't have happened. He also free gaffed a Wahoo in California. Literally, when you're fishing, always be ready for something to happen like that. Kelly and I were running the first day we used the new boat. All of a sudden, something was exploding on a weed line. I had a bait ready. I hauled butt up there real quick and we caught her mom's first sailfish. So always be ready. Have rods rigged, cast nets ready, somebody driving the boat, somebody running the camera if you film, and be ready. Let's put these on ice. Let's do it. Ice, ice, baby. Oh, <laughs> All right, that's cold. How cold? So we've caught bait mullet, we've caught chummies. Now I want to catch a few mullet to eat. Right around the bend here, we just saw a big school of what we call row mullet. They're much bigger. Oh, nice. Yes, yes. Oh. Them jokers smoked this net. Oh, they're in there. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh. That's a great throw right there, bubba. Big ones. Great, good, great. We'll have enough to fry some and smoke them. Those are honkers. Oh! Yeah. Hoglets, though. Hoglets. Oh my gosh. They're so big. All you mullet eaters right now are licking your lips. Salivating. Oh, I want to keep one. You can smell the row. Yeah. The sperm. Oh. The white row. Let's see. 
They're not ready, quite ready yet. That's a male. You can see the sperm starting to come out. Oops, sorry, Joey. So we just pulled up to my favorite seawall to fish. And it's so rough right here, I thought that it was waves crashing against it, but it wasn't. It was giant jacks and snook. So I've got 30 pound mainline Beyond Braid. I'm gonna try to go with a 40 pound test leader, a little four out circle hook, and we're gonna put a mullet on. Look at that. When you're good, they just jump right out for you. <laughs> it's a volunteer. Typically, you have to be quiet when you're fishing these walls, but right now, there's so many waves, you don't have to. Perfect. You want your mullet to land as close as it can to the seawall. Hear all that explosion? Jacks and snook will think that that's other fish eating and they will go nuts. bait fish. It's going to be hard to get them to eat our bait when there's so many other ones. Look at that guy right here! Holy! Oh! Look at this mullet coming through. Oh my goodness. There's just thousands of bait fish right here coming through. But now we have to trick them into eating just our one out of the couple thousand mullet that are here. You really want your mullet to stay right up against that wall because that's how these fish feed. They push them up against the wall and they can catch them a whole lot easier. Here he goes with that little thing. Joey's fishing for crappie, but he's using a whole mullet. Mm -hmm. Shout out Gator Coolers for being my stool for today. It's blowing like 45 right now. Yeah. When the mullets start running like this, you can go down to the beach and you'll just see hundreds of tarpon exploding on them. And you'll think, oh, that's easy. We'll just go catch one. It's so hard because when there's so many baits, the odds of them eating yours are slim to none. Oh! Light leader. Oh, that other rod's out. I'm trying. <laughs> These fish do not play. We're going to have to go with him because he's going to get me around the point. All right, we got the boat turned and now we're going to go to him. Just keep your rod bent at this point and reel. Don't pump and reel, just keep your rod bent and reel. He can get me around those pilings, he can get me around the PVC pipe. Hooked right in the corner of the mouth. Power pole down, Jay. Uh oh, uh oh. Power pole. You're you're good. You're good. He's going under the boat. Still has some more fight in him. What? You have fun yet? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna land him right here. He is fighting. Dang it. He's 
whooping you. Take me for Uh oh, he just tightened the drag. Trying to finesse him in. Gotta take it easy. At this point, you just really gotta use your instincts to really finesse. Oh, tail. Tail grabber. Woo! Come on, Gabe. There you go. Oh. I'm gonna get him. <laughs> if you've never caught one of these giant jacks, you have no idea the power. Oh, get him. Looks like a dog chasing his tail. There you go. It sucks too because the tail's so sharp. Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. Go. Oh, God. <laughs> Look at this huge thing. Nicely right, done. All right, babe, take the ride. <laughs> Give me the ride. Oh. Hold on. Oh. Oh. These things are good to eat. So I'm actually gonna harvest this one. I'm gonna bleed him out while I'm in the water. And we're gonna use this carcass to catch cobia off the bull sharks with Joey and Kelly in a couple of days. See how a circle hook just come right out? This fish is gonna feed a bunch of people and he's gonna help us catch something else. What a day. It's too rough to get offshore, so we're making the best of it. We that almost got close. you in a, real quick. That Kelly filmed me the other day get smacked in the cojones by a fish, but the camera caught as soon as it did it. Y'all watch this funny clip real quick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That hurt really bad. As y'all can see, we've got an assembly line going. Joey's over here vacuum sealing the silver mullet. I'm getting ready to clean the big row mullet, and we're letting the ice drain off all the chummies. This is how we're gonna do it, right y'all? Look here. Right y'all now. Oh, oh Look boy. Look big, big scales, big scales. Flying everywhere. So funny because up until I started YouTube, I didn't think you could eat mullet. I knew people did, especially up in like the Perry, you know, Northwest Florida. But where I grew up, really nobody ate them. Now it's like, I even did finger mullet and they were good. The finger mullet that I cooked were just like Sharpie catfish, which is a catfish that's smaller that we clean whole. They got some scales. Yeah. Get some 3D action right here. We got the smoker out here where we're at because we've got a lot of work to do and we're hungry. So we're gonna be cooking, cleaning, Descaling everything all in one spot. Come right down the backbone, right out the other side. Got my wire glove. We are good to go. A little shell shock from a from a little trigger fish mishap, perhaps. Wire yeah. glove now. Yeah. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> now, one thing I will tell you. That right there is fit to eat, and we're gonna save them. We're gonna save these because we're gonna go after the Kobe in a few days. We're saving it all. Everything is getting used. And crab traps. Oh yeah, and stone crab traps. Good call. Should I get the gut bucket? You know what? Dad has our good ice bucket right now. Mr. Arrington, can you please bring our gut bucket back? We had to go help him clean his deer the other day and he didn't have a cooler, <laughs> so he hijacked our gut bucket. Not the good gut bucket, dang it. <laughs> you notice how he said gut bucket and ice bucket. Yep. We use it for the same thing. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a multi-functional device. Yeah, I, I just realized that I grabbed the ice out of your ice machine and Kelly posted a freaking whole gator carcass in your ice machine. Like <laughs> no, it wasn't, ago. it was in a drum. It wasn't. No, it was not, it was loose in there. You cannot tell me that. I've been eating gator ice this, all day. This guy. I did see him take a big bite of ice out of the ice machine. I'm like, <laughs> I did. I did. I forgot. I forgot tread until lightly. Uh, I forgot until it was too late. Now, that's not the most beautiful meat in the world, but for smoking or frying, it's definitely good. What's well, better than dang kingfish fillets? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to knock a bunch more of these out. Come over here and show them how you vacuum seal these mullet. We got us a good old outrigger vacuum sucking sealer. We just go, oh. 
make sure it's nice and flush. I'm trying, I'm trying. There we go. Both sides clicking, and we're gonna hit the old wax seal. Also, with that vacuum sealer, go in the link in the description below and you can get you that same vacuum sealer and save 10% off. How about that? How about that? Uh, Gabe was just complaining about how much mullet we have to scale, and it is a lot. Uh, and I told him, I picked this thing up, and he goes, no, 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 no. And for those of you who actually watch my channel, you know the deal. So what is your channel? Joe BT Fishing, yeah. Give it a subscribe, yeah. So you see this jet? It's really not the most high pressure jet ever, okay? I, I go out and start spraying this. You know, you need a pressure wash for that thing. But do I? Do I, Gabriel? I start up here and just... It's awful messy. Yeah, but you want to spend two hours scaling all these fish? Joey, you're making a watery mess. Yeah, at least my forearms aren't hurt. There you go. That does look good. Yeah, there's no scales left behind. Looks real good there. Can you tell me why she's eating and not working? Because you're feeding us next, right? Yeah, I'm making you pineapple one? bacon chicken sausage. So it's a it's a, like a disgrace to put pineapple in pizza. Yeah, right. Why I don't eat it without pineapple and sausage now. Pineapple bacon chicken sausage. Probably. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Who's ready to get this started? We got a little bit of sea salt. A little bit of Creoles from Can Cooker. A little bit of Lowry's. To be honest with you, I really wanted to fry this fish, but my last video was fried fish, so Kelly's back in town. If you heard me in that in that particular video, I said I could eat whatever I want because she's not here, but she's back. So there went that idea. Pop her open, babe. I got. Oh, you got eggs. She's over here studying her chickens. I got a lizard. Oh, that's going to be fun. That's what you chickens. were over there doing. Yeah, me and Red Dog. Teaming 225 up. degrees until it's done. I don't know how long that'll take, but however long it takes, what it takes. Smoke mullet. So if you guys have been keeping track of the wild chicken on my channel, she just laid this egg in our coop. A white one? Yeah, it's like a blue white one. It is pretty blue, huh? Y'all leave a comment below if you want to see me do blue okay. gave and blue eggs. A chicken catch, clean and cook here in my yard. So we have we have <laughs> a stray <laughs> chicken that just showed up. Y'all leave a comment if you want me to snipe it with my pellet gun and cook it right here on guys. The guys, the look that Kelly just gave. No, <laughs> I've already developed a relationship with this wild chicken. Uh, leave this a one. Comment below. Leave no, no. Below. no. This one. This below. one's. <laughs> Right here. This is the wild chicken. Fried chicken. And she just laid this egg in our coop. Yeah, blue. Her name's Blue now. Oh, that's a cute name, Blue. Hey, leave a comment below right now and tell me if you want me. It. You see that airboat? I worked my entire life. This was my main goal in life besides having children and meeting Kelly Young. That's my goal. And I come out and the chicken's roosted on it. And y'all, look at the poop. There's poop on my. Guess what? Y'all already know. Poop I got a pellet off. gun. No. Two. You can buy a chicken and put it in the yard. You ain't cooking that one. Well, you best get to cleaning the poop. Well, then I tell will her. clean up after poop, your kids. Poop you can clean up after or your catch, kids. clean, and cook. Patio as well. Don't get patio again. <laughs> poop on the patio. Well, that's yep. for my nice chickens. Nice little splurge of poop. All right, we'll see y'all in the kitchen. Well, we're going to scarf down this because we're super hungry. We got a lot of work still to do. Let me hear your thoughts on the chicken, please. Have my back. Y'all really, have my back. Really, I should just say all you men comment right now. Women, nah. Put some wings nah. and uh, chicken marsala maybe, huh? Men are on my side too. Are you sure? Yeah. What, <laughs> Joey, right now before we end this, do you think there's going to be more comments to eat it or not eat it? Oh, God. It's you know, the, 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 pretty 50 50. You know, uh, so I read something, a statistic today that <laughs> a case of wings before. Uh, pre-pandemic was like $75 a case, and now it's like $175 definitely a case. Eating, so we should start raising chickens and selling them. Yeah. Eat we don't chickens. need to start raising them. We got one sleeping on my airboat. 
Yeah, but off with the head. He's already he's already <laughs> I'll, friends I'll with my other chicken. I'll shoot it with a two-blade rage. It won't even feel it. It's yeah. See, it's very very safe. Yes. And, uh, ethical. Yeah, it's very humane. Ethical. It might flop around for a bit, but it, really, parts. it's all nerves. Yeah. That's it. So it say. appears this in pain. It's actually not in pain. You can find another chicken. Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> You can do it on any other chicken that I haven't built a relationship with. This one, me and I'll Luke, find a chicken. I'll think find about a chicken. your six-year-old son. If I, find a, if I find a chicken before the end of tomorrow, can we do a clean and cook on a chicken for him? Luke would be so sad. A whole chicken. Yeah, if you can find a chicken. I'm going to do it. Not mine, though. No, yeah. <laughs> a whole lot of chicken. Hey, will you do that? Listen, I'm going to play a clip for you guys what Luke told me while we were catching this wild chicken. Just listen to him. This chicken has been pretty much living back here. Kelly. Yes. Uh, we probably got to keep him a secret because Dad might shoot him. Oh. <laughs> because he's wild. But can y'all smell that? What are you? Oh, Joey's done dug in. Y'all look at this meal I have cooked tonight. I made some homemade chicken alfredo, some meatballs and stuffed shells, or actually meatballs and stuffed shells, some garlic knots, got some mullet backs over here. He's graduated to a, uh, a short order chef. Look at this hair though. I mean, I it's got a little bit of a flip to it. How about oh, instead of enough. eating that salad, try a piece of mullet and let the, let the folks at home real quick know how it tastes. Fun fact, I've never eaten mullet before. Actually, it looks really good. It smells like pork. Pork? Yeah. Look at that. The yellow on the back from the spices. It's actually cool how it seeped in like that. <laughs> what was that face for? I'm shocked that it's good. What about the collars I cooked for you? You'd never ate them and you love them now. Yeah, I know. I eat them all the time. I'm the collar guy now. I'm Joey, the fish collar guy. What's up? Are you eating my homegrown salad over there? Yep. Did you make Parmesan cheese too? The skin sucks. Yeah, I don't really like the skin. Did you get a bone? Or no, you're no, just no. putting that out. Yep. It's actually... It tastes like... It, Kind of tastes like pork. It's going to be a lot better tomorrow when we put it in that dip. Are you yeah, coming over to get a bite? You get your own piece, Kelly. The Moet. The Murret. Murret. Some dirty pork. Alright. It's pretty moist. Those are really cute headphones. Can you even hear me? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? I've had these headphones for probably like eight years. Yay or nay? It does kind of taste like. I smoke. know. It's because it's yeah, smoked. Yeah, that's why. It has like a smoke ring around it, like. That it tastes is, like pork. It's that's little... so funny. You're over there eating away. Cause it's good. Yeah, it is good. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna end it right here while we're on a high note. You guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Y'all check out Kelly Young's channel. Check out Joey V. There you go. Joe V T. Yeah, jo there you go. Joe V T. <laughs> on YouTube, and be sure to hit that subscribe button on all three of our channels. We will greatly appreciate it. Joey's here for about a week. Obviously, Kelly's here for good. We're gonna make a ton of videos this week. I hope you guys have a great night. We'll see you soon. Like Jake always says, though, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape.